Hi everyone. So, just wanted to show what I picked up yesterday. Um, as you can see, it's a Commodore 64 uh, and a 1541 disk drive, data set unit, joystick, printer, and some cabling for it. Um, and I do have a couple of these units, but none of them in the original box. So, I picked this up yesterday for quite a fair price. Um, haven't tested it yet. I have opened the boxes to quickly check if everything's in it, and it is. But it all smells kind of moldy and has probably been in storage in someone's attic or shed in the yard for quite some time. So let's unbox all of this and see if it works and uh, get it cleaned so it doesn't smell as bad and uh, just uh, see if it needs fixing or whether it just works. All right, let's go. Okay, so the books all look in good condition. They don't smell as bad either. So these are the manuals for the printer. One in English and one in German for some reason. Um, the manual for the data set. The manual for the 1541 disk drive. The Dutch manual for the 64 and the English manual for 64. Nice. So we'll just those aside. Next we have some yucky looking and feeling cables. I, mean, I don't know if you can see it on video but they look to be a bit moldy and they smell really bad too so we'll get those clean. Just put those aside as well. And then we have the arcade joystick by Suzo. Micro actuated, Spirit Monster, and here it says the same thing only in German. Now, the fun thing is about all of these, you can see the yellow sticker here and here, it also has one on the C64 and also on the 5041 disk drive. It's the original price from I believe somewhere mid 80s. So this thing cost back then 65 guilders. I'm Dutch so these were guilders and these are comparable to euros uh, right now adjusted for inflation. So it's somewhere around 65 euros for just a joystick. And this one does look a lot nicer. It still feels dirty-ish. All the switches, the mechanical switches seem to be fine, but it yeah, it, it smells terrible. So we'll get that clean as well. And of course the 1530 dis uh, data set unit which cost a hundred and six ninety six uh, I'm sorry a hundred and sixty nine guilders so it's about a hundred and sixty nine euros today and this one obviously has been in storage for a while I mean the the the, the foam has just stuck right onto the cable um, but it, Overall, it seems in pretty good condition. Somehow, all of the disk drives, the, the, the data set drives I have, they all seem to have these burn marks. I think from a soldering iron or something, I don't know. But it's dirty, but other than that, it looks fine. It doesn't look all that yellowed and just it needs a good clean. Also, the funny thing is, this has a white counter, and all the other ones I have have a black counter, which is also slightly bigger. So, I don't know why that is. Uh, probably they just took what was uh, on the shelf at the time. Um, made in Japan, don't know what year this is from exactly, but my guess is it's the same as the uh, Commodore and uh, floppy drive itself, as they all seem to be bought from the same store. And also this one has a cassette still in it. Don't know what uh, what is on it. It says Adventureland, but it has been striked through. It just says TAP1. So 
It will be fun to see what's on here. But this one also needs to clean, and I'll just leave it out of the box for now. Put that away somewhere. And the box is broken, so that will need some glue. Next, we've got. Just put you back here a bit because it's quite a bit big box. Fifteen forty one single floppy disk. This one says it's made in Germany. So this one was sold originally for. 899 guilders. Wow. I don't know. What, what was the Commodore sold for? Ah, it says right here. 869 guilders. So, the floppy drive was actually more expensive than the computer itself. But we'll, we'll get to this one later. So, this, this box is obviously it's been in storage for a while, it's dirty, it smells, it's yeah, yucky. I'll have to I have to clean that. But first let's see what's inside. Is this the yeah it's the wrong way around. Ta-da! Oh, it comes with a plasticky cover. And I mean, yeah, it's it's dirty. It looks like it has some paint on it or something. It has a sticker with the uh, address of the previous owner. And it has a name sticker on here as well. Put that. So yeah, it's 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 dirty. <laughs> definitely, definitely needs to be cleaned. I mean, it just. Oh my goodness. It's just years of people turning it off and on with their apparently quite dirty hands. Uh, I, don't, it, I mean, it doesn't look that bad other than being dirty. Huh. Still has a disc in it. So what? what's on here? Football, which just... It, that's soccer, kickstart, burning rubber, David's Midnight, River Raid. Oh. I don't really know what any of these are, but we'll, we'll check this disc out too, see if it works. So. And does this cover fit? It's just a generic beige cover up and it's, it's broken. Generic cover thing. I would imagine this side being on the back so the cables can run through. It's just a matter of... Oops. Huh. Yeah. That, that fits nicely, actually covers the entire drive. Hmm. I don't know about this, that that might be fixable. I don't know, it's I mean everything about this is old. So we'll I'll I'll check if this can be saved or maybe I'll just have to make a new one. And of course, here we have the cables for the disk drive, so there's a power cable, 
and a data cable at least it looks like it's a data cable I really don't know what this hmm I've seen those plugs before I just don't know what did how they relate to this disk drive oh well side here so now of course the main attraction the C64 itself so all of these had a serial number on the box and mine is right here so it's 1575472 and uh, it should match the serial number on the machine. So let's see if it does. This box also needs a good clean. So, oh, got it the wrong way around. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so this thing really, I mean, we don't have smell-o-vision, um, but I can tell you it's, it's pretty, pretty bad, pretty moldy smell, like it's been in someone's shed for ages. So this also comes with a cover. Also a plastic kind of thing with a nice cutout for the cables. This one seems to be intact. There's the power supply, which is... Yeah, it has burn marks or some something... I don't know, it just it looks banged up. We'll, uh, we'll have to check the voltages on this because they tend to blow up and they tend to output more than they were rated for. So this one says it's 220 volts, come on, focus, 220 volts, 50 hertz AC input, 9 volts, 1 amp AC output, and 5 volts, 1.5 amp DC output. Um, when these break, Okay, so <clears throat> I got uh, almost everything plugged in. Um, I've got an, uh, my uh, little monitor here. Um, I got my S video cable I made. This is quite a long one because um, when I'm uh, playing on my Commodore in the living room, I want to be able to have the computer on the uh, on the table near me, and uh, my TV is quite far away, so I just use a really long cable. And I grabbed my cheap multimeter so we can check the Commodore power supply. So it's plugged in right now, so it should output, well, something. Um, and these top two ones here in the plug, so if you have the little dent to the, uh, towards the top, these two should output 9 volts AC, and these bottom ones. This, this one uh, should be ground, I think, and this one should be plus 5 volts. And um, it, uh, it should be grounded at the... Uh, well, what do you call it, as well. So, let's put the multimeter in AC. And try not to short anything out. So oh, that's 10, seems to be a bit high, but I mean the, uh, the guy I bought it from um, showed that it worked by um, 
posting a photo of the power LED being turned on. So if this power supply is bad, which it very well could be because they tend to fail, um, the damage is probably already done. So let's try and measure the 5 volts. Okay, so that's the most important one. It's 5.2. It's a bit on the high side, but it will probably be fine. As long as it's below about 5.4 or something, it won't really damage anything, at least in my experience. So let's see. The machine is turned off. Let's hook up the video. So these cables, as this is an S-video cable, this will only work if your Commodore has the correct um, video output. So this plug needs to fit in there. And just unhook the disk drive. That is the video port. It should look like that. If it doesn't have this exact plug on it, it won't work with S-video. The earlier models didn't have the Luma Chroma signal, they only had the Luma signal, so you'd probably get black and white, but it won't work in color with S video. So it's important to note. Let's just plug the disk drive back in. And plug in our S video signal. And our audio. Uh, it's here. Okay. And plug this side into the computer. Like that. And then I lost my remote. So let's turn on the TV. And AV1, AV2, there we are, AVS. And put that in there. Okay. Um, first, let's see if the 1541 works. So it's it's plugged in. It has power. Okay, that's good. So it shows the red light for a bit. The motor turns and then it turns off. This this means it passed the self test. So the drive electronics are working. Um, it's just a matter of the, are the heads clean and well could be a lot of things wrong with this so let's just put that in there for a bit uh, and also let's um, hook up the data set see what that thing does so um, let's just put that right here and this goes into the back of the computer as well So I haven't cleaned anything about this, so if things don't work, it, it could as well, just as well be just dirty, dirty contacts or something. Okay, moment of truth. Nothing. Okay, so it is on. It is set to S video. Okay. Well, maybe just try the RF. Don't know if I have the correct RF channel selected or available on this TV. Antenna. 
as I said, it could just be dirty contacts. Okay, turn it on again. At least the disk drive spins and. Well, you would expect that that doesn't work. I don't know if I have it on here. So, um, let me try and search for the correct channel. See if I, uh, if I can get it to show up on the, on the TV. So I found what channel it should be in the manual, but the funny thing is I couldn't find it in the English manual. But it um, it says so right here in the Dutch manual. The TV should be tuned to channel 36 in the UHF band. So I tried that and um, I can't find any signal at all. So it probably means that something is up with this Commodore. So just remove the antenna cable. And wiggle this around a bit to try to reset it. Nope. Nothing. Now the funny thing is that the disk drive does spin. The 1541 disk drive does spin when you power on the machine. So it is doing something. Just take this out and turn on the computer. So it does send some command to the 1541, but other than that, it, I mean, it's just it's outputting black. Just black. Nothing. So there could be a couple of things wrong. It could be that the VIC is uh, dead, it could be the CPU is dead, or that the ROM is dead. Also a couple of other things, but um, these are the, the things I have seen before. And I, as I said, I have a couple of these machines. I have a donor one, which I can use to swap chips from, but um, yeah, we'll have to just try out some things. So the first thing I want to try out is uh, get the Final Cartridge 3, which is kind of a funny name, I mean, what happened to the first two, but uh, Final Cartridge 3 and probably the uh, some other cartridge, because uh, the, some of them have their own ROM on it, uh, so we can check to see if it's the ROM that's not working. So let me grab one of those. Okay, so I have the final cartridge 3 and the KCS power cartridge and let's see what it what the machine does with any of these in it. Just get rid of the stupid get this off. Okay, so same thing. The Power cartridge does have its LED on, so it's getting power, but the, the power cartridge, the ultimate cartridge, uh, but it doesn't do anything. And this one has its own ROM in it, so 
could also be a damaged RAM. Let's see if the power cartridge. Nope, same thing. So, uh, guess we have to open up the machine. Ah, right, and as I said before, the boxes on these things have serial numbers on the sides. Or they have a serial number somewhere on it. And this one has the serial number 1575472. And the machine has 1575472. So, yay, the serial numbers. Now let's uh, let's open it up. Oh, wow. Okay, so obviously this has never been opened up. It still has the RF shield that uh, Adrian from uh, Adrian's Digital Basement really hates. And yeah, I mean, I don't like them, but yeah, they're, they're just not that useful anymore. I mean, they were in here to do some RF shielding, and today everything you've got in your house is outputting way more RF than these are, so it was just to meet some FCC guidelines or something, but in reality, it, in, today it's just no use. So, it's, it's dirty on the inside as well. I mean, just, just get a look in there, it's all kinds of gunk and dust and hair and other stuff in there the board itself actually looks pretty good so it's a 250425 revision it has this nice heat sink on the Linear voltage regulator here. And well you have to turn it on. For, well, let's just try to push down on some of these socketed ICs a bit. Maybe some of them got loose or the Vic and the color RAM. Also check this fuse. Before any of you comment on it, yes, I do need to get a better multimeter. This this thing just it sucks. Okay, so that's good. Um, we also want to check the outputs on the regulator here and on the regulator here. This is the five volt regulator. This is the twelve volt regulator. Um, if they're broken, I should have replacements for those as well. So let's plug in the video and plug in the power and well, <laughs> still nothing. Uh, let's measure these. So this would be the the 
the output. This is the input. 11 volts. 5.07. So that's good. This one. Wow. Huh. Just goes off the charts. 20 volts input. This one's ground. This is regulated. 12 volts DC. Okay, so that's fine. Let's also measure across the little bypass caps here for the memory. 5.06. So that's all fine. So we've got power, the regulators are okay, the voltages are okay. Uh, let's check if some of the chips get hot. And yeah, I mean, I mean, they're not hot, hot, but they're warm. So the VIC is getting warm. CPU, these are getting warm as well. Okay. So it could be that we just have short a PLA or something. I mean, short a PLA would mean a black screen. Let me grab my donor 64 and um, see if we can swap some chips from this one with uh, the other 64 to see uh, if any of the chips are bad. Because that while that one uh, is missing memory, it should at least power on. Uh, and else, uh, well, I just have to grab another 64 to see if any of the chips work in there. So, hold on and be right back. I decided to stop this video here and call this part 1, as it's already getting quite long. In part 2, there will be some further testing to try and get this machine working. And I'll link to that video in the video description once it becomes available. There will also be a part 3 and maybe even a part 4 where I'll be thoroughly cleaning the machine, the accessories and the boxes. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, uh, ask your questions in the comments below, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when the next part is up. And for now, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.